Whether a phone uses Wi-Fi or cellular data, communication with other devices requires the transmission of data. This transmission involves two processes, the generation and propagation of data, followed by the retrieval of that data. This is achieved by using a transmitter to generate data and a receiver antenna to retrieve it. The transmitter contains a long, thin conductor connected to an AC power supply. The electrons start oscillating when AC current flows. Oscillation involves the acceleration and deceleration of electric charges. Accelerating charges produce electromagnetic waves, which propagate in all directions. Data is transmitted in the form of EM waves. The receiver contains a similar conductor. When EM waves strike the antenna, the electrons absorb energy and start oscillating at the same frequency as that of the incident waves. This electronic oscillation creates an AC current in the receiving antenna, which is then converted to a usable form, like a text message. Energy is obviously used when transmitting and receiving data, and that energy is provided by the phone's battery. Power output at the receiver antenna drops by the inverse square of the distance from the transmitter. Thus, doubling the distance between the antennas decreases the power output by four times. To ensure that the signal strength doesn't wane, more power is required at the transmitter, which further affects the battery. To establish the disparity of power consumption between GSM and Wi-Fi, some typical usage scenarios were devised. These scenarios included emailing, downloading random data, and web browsing. Mobile data and Wi-Fi were alternately used to perform these tasks. When emails were sent over Wi-Fi, some power was consumed by GSM to keep the device connected to the cellular network. This power consumption was about 90 milliwatts. When emails were sent over GSM, the Wi-Fi power consumption was nearly nil. Through other tests, it is evident that browsing over GSM consumes more power than browsing over Wi-Fi. This is because a background connection to the cellular network is maintained at all times to receive calls and texts. Additionally, for all quality levels of streaming video, mobile data consumes more energy than Wi-Fi. The lower the streaming resolution, the greater the disparity. Streaming at lower quality requires less energy consumption, but the phone still maintains that baseline cellular connection to receive texts and calls, which adds to the battery drain. It is clear that mobile data consumes more energy than Wi-Fi in real-life scenarios, because a cellular connection must always be maintained for calls and texts. Also, cellular towers are generally very far away, as compared to at-home Wi-Fi routers. In areas with weak cellular coverage, the phone will receive that weak signal, and will then try even harder to maintain the network connection, which draws even more power. Moving around in the world also means shifting connections between cell towers, which adds to battery drain. Wi-Fi routers, however, are usually within 100 meters. Perhaps best of all, since Wi-Fi connections aren't essential for calls and texts, the energy consumed by Wi-Fi drops close to zero when not in use.